The U.S. dollar rose to a 13-month high in choppy trading as investors assessed the latest labor market data and comments from Federal Reserve. While its peers were mixed against the U.S. dollar in European and U.S. trade, let's get all the latest. Lachlan Meekin from Go Markets joins me now. Lachlan, just to set the scene, has it been, like, where are we looking for volatility in currency markets right now? Good morning. Hey, hi, Nadine. Well, yeah, it's been an interesting couple of weeks since this election. Um, we've seen that Trump trade really push the US dollar stronger, um, a little bit of a pullback this week, and it's taken off again. So I think volatility, certainly in that the uncertainty of how these possible tariffs are going to work when, when Trump gets in, and also, um, you know, the geopolitical things going on with this you know, escalation we're seeing in Ukraine, which is really weighed on uh, European currencies it, you know, in general and, and also the pound as well. So we did see the, the pound and the euro come off pretty heavily last night uh, against the US dollar, mostly US dollar strength, but also that geopolitical stuff. Um, and the Aussie dollar actually did outperform yesterday, which uh, was interesting to see, really holding on to that 65 support level there against the US. Okay. And, and so what is your outlook for the US dollar? I know that there's so much water to still go under the bridge when it comes to the incoming government in the United States, cabinet appointments, what that will mean for policy going forward. But is the US dollar going to continue in its ascendancy? It's really hard to see uh, in the short term anyway, not to, the US dollar not um, rallying, uh, continuing on that Trump trade. There's um, a lot of things going for it. There's a bit of a hawkishry pricing in, in what the Fed's going to do. We see that December rate cut um, under 50-50 chance now, which a couple of months ago, it was a done deal. So um, that hawkish price, and we see the Fed pushing back a little bit against cut as well. And, and you see the Fed really um, focusing on the positives of the US economy, whereas you see, you know, some of the, their peers, such as the ECB, um, seem to focus more on, on the weakness in the Eurozone. So um, everyone's holding on to their dollar longs for now. So short term, it'd be very difficult to see uh, yeah, any kind of major pullback in the US dollar. But um, everything's really up in the air once um, once we get this new administration on uh, in January. Yeah, all right. Well, um, let's deal with the here and now then for the Aussie dollar in particular. It was quite quiet on the economic data front here locally and even in China throughout the week. So when you think about the Aussie dollar in the short term, where are you looking for the key drivers to come from? Uh, I'm pretty bullish on the Aussie dollar um, against the, the, the cross currencies, maybe not against the US. I think the US is a bit of an unknown factor and more likely going to um, you know, have that stronger US dollar. But certainly against um, the Kiwi dollar, I think the driver in that pair especially is, is the RBA hawkishness where we've got they're very resolute in holding on to this, you know, the top of their rate cycle, whereas everyone else seems to be cutting and, and look like we're getting at least a 50 basis point out of the Kiwis next week, possibly 75. So. That pair, um, yeah, I think we'll see it higher, even though it's near the topish of its range. But uh, those two-year yields, the differentials have blown out a bit as well, the Aussie Kiwi. So a bit more upside there. Um, I think the other driver for the, the Aussie is, is commodity prices have bounced back OK this week. We've seen gold, iron ore, um, which have supported it. Um, so those two factors, I, and I guess the unknown, what is capping the Aussie is, is how these tariffs, if they come about, how they'll affect uh, China. So there's that uncertainty there, but there's a lot of otherwise bullish uh, signals for the Aussie dollar, I think. Mm, okay. So do you have a year-end target for the Aussie? Or it, or did none of these year-end targets matter this year, Lachlan, uh, because we've got the inauguration coming in January 20th? I Against the, the US dollar, it's difficult to say because that's a bit of an unknown depending on, as you said, the Treasury Secretary who he chooses for that. Um, the more information about how these tariffs are going to work, the, the, what's going on in Ukraine. So risk off is obviously not good for the Aussie dollar either. Um, I would say that we'll be lower against the US dollar, but not, not a great deal so just because of US dollar strength. I certainly think we'll be stronger against the Kiwi, especially with what's going to happen next week out of the RBNZ. So I would say we'd probably hit uh, 2024 highs on that pair, which would be around 111.50 and above. Um, against, yeah, against the US, there's, there's difficult to say. It depends how these things pan out. But I would think the Aussie would be a little bit weaker, maybe the between 64 and 65, I'm guessing, by the end of the year. OK, so um, for the RBNZ next week and the Kiwi dollar, of course, you're expecting rate cuts? Well, market's fully priced in 50, so that's um, almost a done deal. And there's also some thought that a little bit of pricing in of a 75, which is a you know, supersized cut. Now, I guess 
when you look at the Kiwi to the Aussie, which is one of my favourite pairs to trade, is that that rate differential, uh, being short the Aussie Kiwi, you were, you were getting paid money up until, well, up until next week, it'll flip over. So all the shorts are all of a sudden having to start pay interest on those positions. So um, I think if, if even if a 50, we'll still see the Aussie rally from there. Um, a 75, we'll probably see a, a big move up in that Aussie Kiwi pair. And I guess the Kiwis too, they've, they've got some of the same um, risk um, profile as us, whereas a risk off market like uh, Ukraine escalation, et cetera, affects both of us uh, equally. So the, the fact the Aussie has that stronger fundamentals, I think, with the with the RBA being more hawkish than the RBNZ, then I can see it being well supported that pair and, and pushing the top of that kind of eight-year range, probably around that 112 to 115 in the near future. Yeah, and you kind of alluded earlier to the sterling, obviously coming under a bit of pressure in regards to, you know, the, the Trump pump for the US dollar, but versus the euro, how is the how is that sterling faring? Yeah, it's an interesting one. It's it's another pair that um, is a good is a good range trading pair to trade. And we're seeing it right at the bottom of that another eight year range actually as well, around the 83 level, the euro versus the pound. But um, I certainly this 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 range is in danger, I think. I think the the British the the pound certainly has better fundamentals than uh, Europe and if these tariffs come about, we, we you kind of expect some inflationary pressure in the US, but de- disinflationary elsewhere in the world. So the the ECB or eurozone, I think, will be affected more by that. Um, we've got a much more dovish ECB than you do Bank of England. We saw a Bank of England governor yesterday push back a little bit on how dovish the market was pricing in um, for cuts next year, and also they had a you know they've they've seen that sticky in services inflation still holding on high. So um, fundamentally, I think the pound's definitely looking better than the euro, and I, I really think that eight-year range is probably in a bit of danger at 83 on that pair. If we see a break below, then um, you know it's fresh air under there. It hasn't been that low for many years, so we could see a fair drop on it. So it sounds to me, Lachlan, like you are finding plenty of opportunity out there in trading some of these pairs. Um, what about Bitcoin? I mean, it's you can't really look past it. It's approaching the hundred thousand level. Um, when is it yes. going to run out of steam? Because nothing goes up in one way, uh, you know, without having a little bit of at least a breather. No, you're right. It's it's been a, a kind of amazing rally there. I mean, that's part of the Trump trade too. He's seen as much more crypto friendly than the outgoing. Uh, administration but I mean we've seen these pumps in uh, Bitcoin before and a pretty major pullback after that it's really hard to say it's 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 one of those it's it's almost like a, a Nasdaq stock in a way it's a tech stock that it just has this um, momentum that builds behind it and will, will fly off in you know as high as it will go but who knows where it's going to go but there will there will be some type of pullback definitely um but whether it's, it's the pullback and a, a retrace again we'll have to see but i think a lot's going to depend on um some of the choices for for trump's presidency we saw that you know the sec guy against that was very anti-crypto so um if we get some more friendly crypto people in with trump appointments then who knows sky's the limit possibly i, I unfortunately haven't gotten any myself 